Dr. Harries, why is it a problem if people have both TB and um, diabetes? Okay, well, main, the, why is it a problem? Well, first, first of all, th these two diseases do interact with each other. Uh, and the problem is really that uh, it's, if you have both diseases, it interferes with your anti-tuberculosis treatment. So you're, you take longer to become non-infectious on TB treatment, so that's a problem. So uh, generally people will become non-infectious maybe two or three weeks after they start treatment, but if it's longer, it takes maybe three or four weeks or five weeks, that's an issue because you can transmit to, to people close to you. Secondly, there's quite good evidence that your risk of dying on TB treatment is increased if you've got diabetes. Um, we're not quite sure of the reasons for this. Thirdly, there's, uh, there's evidence to show that if you're a diabetic, you are more likely to fail your TB treatment. Again, we don't understand why, but that's not a good thing because if you fail treatment, uh, that means you've got to have a second course of treatment. And then finally, there is in fact quite good evidence to show that if you complete your TB treatment and you're a diabetic, and then you say, fantastic, I'm cured, um, you are much more likely than a normal person, three times more likely than a normal person, to get tuberculosis again. And again, we don't understand the mechanisms for this. So these are areas for research, really, to understand why, and also research to say, well, what are the strategies we could do to try and reduce these adverse treatment outcomes? Can you explain why China and India seem to have a perfect storm for both these diseases? No, very interesting, isn't it? So just to, just to give you some background, um, if you look at China and India uh, and you look at the latest TB figures, um, they comprise about a third of the world's population for tuberculosis. Uh, China having a million tuberculosis cases a year and India having 2.2 million tuberculosis cases per year. China and India are also the lead countries for diabetes. <laughs> uh, China has nearly now 100 million people living with diabetes and India has uh, probably about 70 million people living with, uh, living with diabetes. So why have they got a lot of diabetes? It's to do with, I think, rapid urbanization. Um, and along with rapid urbanization, change in lifestyle, change in food, more fast food, less exercise, all of these are factors relating to, um, to diabetes. Plus, of course, increasing overweight levels and obesity levels. These things are very tied up. And unfortunately, people used to think where diabetes occurs, TB does not occur. They used to think diabetes is a disease of the rich. It's not. It's a disease that affects poor countries and middle-income countries. And they used to say, oh, well, maybe it's just the rich in these countries. Not so. It's the poor urban populations where uh, exercise may be difficult to come by, cheap food is easier to come by, and all these things, I think, predispose. Plus, there's probably a genetic predisposition as well. So you're quite right. Um, if you look at those two countries, diabetes TB, to me, is a big, big problem. Just like HIV, TB is a big problem in Africa, I think we have to say in Asia, diabetes TB is, is, is the next, the looming epidemic, as we've called it, uh, uh, in that part of the world. Some people have said, oh, well, is, is Africa spared this? And the answer is no. The, according to the two big diabetes federations in the world, the International Diabetes Federation, the World Diabetes Foundation, diabetes is escalating in Africa. So uh, it's something we need to pay attention to. And is uh, treatment readily available or is price a factor at all? Absolutely. So this is another, it's a very, very good question. That. So generally in the tuberculosis world, treatment's free. You know, diagnosis, treatment's free for tuberculosis patients. Not so for non-communicable diseases, which include diabetes. So basically people have to pay for that diagnosis and they have to pay for the treatment. And unlike tuberculosis, which is six months treatment, finished, cured, in most people, diabetes is a disease for life. So I think this is a major, going to be a major issue to, to say how, how do we help such people 
fund their medication. At the moment, people pay out of pocket for this. Um, and then diabetes can lead to complications, so you can have what's called catastrophic health expenditure. Bankrupt you, bankrupt your family. And you know, the world signed up now to universal health coverage. Yeah, which universal health coverage means health coverage um, at basically a reasonable financial cost, which doesn't allow families to become bankrupt. Yeah? So we'll see what happens. We'll see whether this sort of pledge is honoured as we move forward uh, uh, through the years. It's diffi difficult, difficult problem. You know, you think 600 million people with diabetes in 15 years time, which is what people predict, you know, are we going to be able to afford free treatment for everybody? I don't know the answer. Thank you, Dr. Harris. <laughs>